this morning. Uh, please be seated. Our opening prayer this morning will be a little different than uh, we ordinarily do. Um, we will read the first line, and then I'm going to ask you to, to do some things with your hands. Uh, so in, in advance of that, you might want to find a place to, to place uh, the bulletin in your hand, up in your lap, so that your hands are free. Uh, it's not complicated, but uh, I invite you to join me in this time of prayer that not only involves our minds and our lips and our hearts, but also our bodies. So if you would please join me in this time of prayer. God of this moment, God in this moment, hear our prayer. If you would please take your hands and open them up and place them palm down. God, as we accept this posture, the things in our hands and our hearts that we are holding that hold us back, the things in our hands and hearts, O oh God, that we cling to so tightly that they drag us down. O oh God, we ask that through the power of your Spirit, and the grace of your love, that you would allow us to release them. And now I invite you, if you would please, to place your hands palm upward. Leave them open. O oh God, now that our hearts, our lives, and our hands are open, we ask that you would fill us both our lives, our hearts, and our hands, with the gifts you have for us. Be present with us now, as we have been released and have released those things which have held us and that we have held that bring us down. Let us pray together. As we have released those things that we have held and that held us. May we live into the gift of this moment in this place. We pray in the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. Amen. Would you rise if able as we sing together Selection 234.
the purist in me, the poet and the person who loves words, uh, always believes that if the poet wrote all those words, we should sing it. But the realist and the person who runs out of breath in me <laughs> believes that sometimes discretion is the greater part of battle. Uh, so thank you. We'll, we'll leave out a couple of hymns, stanzas. I would invite you, if you would please, to hear from the Old Testament, from the book of Micah, uh, that you would hear these words. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, you are one of the little clans of Judah. From you shall come forth for me one who will rule in Israel, whose origin is from old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them until the time give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth. And he shall be the one of peace. If the Assyrians come into our land and tread upon our soil, we will raise against them seven shepherds and eight installed as rulers. The epistle reading comes from Hebrews, the 10th chapter. I would invite you to hear from verses 5 through 10. Consequently, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. And burnt offerings and sin offerings you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, See God, I have come to do your will, O God, and the scroll of the book it is written of me. When he said the above, You have neither desired nor taken pleasure in sacrifices and offerings, and burnt offerings and sin offerings, these are offered according to the law. Then he added, See, I have come to do your will. He abolishes the first in order to establish the second. And it is by God's will that you have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Today we light our Advent wreath, and it is the fourth Sunday. I would invite you, if you would please, to uh, hear these words and then respond uh, in the bold-faced type. An angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, the virgin will conceive and bear a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. As we light the fourth candle today, it represents the present. May we let go of the past and in faith anticipate the future as we allow the risen Christ Emmanuel, God with us to fulfill this moment. We should have an insert in case we don't have the words for the light. We have this candle.
of my favorite quotes is to err is human, to forgive divine. And I promise you, I will offer you many chances to forgive and be divine. For I will make many mistakes. I would invite you, if you would please, to join me now in this time of prayer. Remembering those uh, joys and concerns we shared uh, earlier and those things which are only in our hearts, which we uh, sometimes can only whisper in prayer. Uh, let us pray. Oh God, indeed we do remember the Trawick family. We pray that you would be with the Patricia's family that needs to heal family units. We pray, oh God, that you would be with you would be with Lynn's mother, Pat, as she goes through this time of treatment and a time of of healing and recovery. We pray that you would be with Carol as he continues to recover. Oh God, we live in a world in which we are so aware of the maladies and the difficulties of life. Help us, oh God, in those times in which those realities seem to overwhelm us, to also be reminded of your Emmanuel, that you are with us. You are with us when we ascend to the tops of mountains. You are with us when we are in the valley of despair and loss. Help us, O oh God, to find both comfort and strength when you are with us in the valleys. And help us to find greater joy as we experience, experience the highs and the victories in this life. We look, O oh God, around the world and we see that there are others who also experience these difficulties and valleys in life. And so we look to the people that are suffering because of the tornadoes. We pray that you would continue to be with them. And as we make our humble gifts to them, may they receive them in the spirit in which they have been given, in hope and in love, so that they may know that as they struggle, indeed, Emmanuel, God with them, is true. But it is also true that we are with them in our hopes and our prayers so that their lives may be restored, that as they grieve their losses, they may not grieve alone. And as they prepare for a future, they do so with the prayers and hopes of us, we who offer our gifts to them. Oh God, as we come today to a time of worship in which we celebrate that you are with us. Help us also feel your presence in this moment so that when we leave we might be able to say I was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the Lord. For God we are so grateful for all who might be joining us through live stream or rebroadcast. We pray that as we are united in this manner, that we might also know that we are remind, reminded of your love and of your care for us. Help us, O oh God, whether we are present here or whether we are worshiping afar, to know that we are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord, and may all know that we are Christians by our love for you and our love for one another. We offer this prayer in the name of Jesus, the gift of love that came down at Christmas, remembering that he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we have given our gifts already here or at the back, I would invite you, if you would please, to join me in a time of praise and thanksgiving for these gifts as we give them and dedicate them to God's purpose.
when I uh, prayed about and thought about how we might progress through the season of Advent, uh, it would have been a little easier probably for everyone uh, if we had just stayed with the standard uh, Sundays of Advent that we often do where we have hope and we have joy and we have peace and we have love, uh, but decided that maybe this year we would do something a little different. And so we've done that. We've begun with pray, uh, and that was prepare, pray, uh, peace, and then today presence. Uh, alliteration being uh, my hope that we might be able to remember these four uh, Sundays. Uh, and then in this moment, I have illustrated that sometimes we can't do that. Uh, but I hope that you have lived into that a little bit. I hope that you have taken a moment to prepare, that you've maybe had a, a way of moving some things around in your home and in your life, in your spirit, so that there might be room for this Christ child, this Savior this year. I'm hoping that prayer has been a part of your daily Advent preparations. I hope you have experienced the peace of God which passes all understanding, even in the midst of difficulty and loss, reminders of loss, reminders that there are empty chairs during this season of celebration that were not empty last year. And now I hope that we might be able to live into the present. Might be able to live into this very moment and the moments that will come after them. It is, of course, the cliche that um, the present is a gift. That's why they call it a present. But somehow, that's not the way we often live our lives. We often live our lives living in the past or living in the future or trying to live in the past or trying to live in the future. Psychologists remind us that, that when we have something from the past that, that comes and occupies our mind, no longer it is something that happened years ago, it is something that is happening now. And one of the healthy things that we can do as we grow is to let those things go. And so what we've done this morning is in part an exercise that we might practice every day. We might begin every day or begin every day with we're just acknowledging that there are some things in our hands and our hearts that are weighing us down. And with a very conscious physical act, literally turn our hands over and let them fall away. Just turn them over. They won't cling to us. These things are not magnetized and our hands are iron. They are not Velcro and, and somehow whenever we turn our hands over, they, they won't let go. They're not glued to us. These things that hold us are literally things which we hold. And we know that one of the reasons we do that is for control. If we can hold on to them a bit longer, then we can own them. Maybe we can master them. Maybe we can defeat them. Only to discover that that just makes our hands and our lives and our hearts and our minds tired. So the best thing for us to do is to just release to let go. To live into this moment. To 
live into the presence. I heard a story one time about a man who lived in Europe and was coming to the United States. It was a long time ago, and he converted everything he had to gold. He had gold coins. But as the, as the trip went on, a storm came. The ship began to go down. But he wanted his gold. And so he loaded his pockets full of this gold. He held on to what he could in his hands. And of course the ship went down and he with it. There was a board there that, that would hold him but it would not hold the weight of the gold and the weight of him. And so he had a decision to make. He had to decide if he would let the gold go or if he would have the gold to drag him under. And of course the question then, did he have the gold or did the gold have him? Sometimes we live in a way and a life in which we hold on to things which we think are ours, that we have them, only to discover that they have us <coughs> and they drag us down. Would you pray with me for just a moment? Oh God, as we come together, we ask that you would help us to live into this moment. Emmanuel, God with us. Amen. I, uh, I, I wanted to share with you just a little bit um, of, of uh, theological education. Uh, I know it's always exciting whenever you hear the pastor say, <laughs> The original Greek says, <laughs> and everybody says, oh, I can't wait to hear what that's going to be. Well, I'm going to share with you just a few heresies of the early church. Now, I know you're just going to just can't wait to, to get back to your Facebook friends and say, you're not going to believe one of the heresies I learned about. But here they are. One of the heresies evolving the incarnation was that Jesus was God's first creation and that Jesus and the Holy Spirit are not divine. The human Jesus and the Holy Spirit are not divine. That Jesus was not of one substance with the Father. That was one of the heresies. And one of the other ones, one of my favorite ones, especially as we made jokes uh, my first uh, month here, that I was a hologram, I really didn't exist, that Jesus was spiritual, he was not human, and he only looked human. It was just kind of a little mind game that God was playing on uh, creation. One of the other heresies that they had is that Jesus had a human body but a divine soul. Therefore, he was not fully human. Uh, and then one of the last ones I'll share with you is that, is that he had a divine nature and a human nature that he was kind of like two people in one. If you listen to the early creeds, you, you, you hear them saying he was begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father. So why is that important to us? Because Christianity has, has a, a unique view of this God and our relationship with the human creature. The message says in John 1, when we translate, he became flesh and dwelt among us. Eugene Peterson has that saying, he moved into the neighborhood. 
not this hologram, not this looking like God, but really just being a, a figment of our imagination. Not somehow someone who, who has a spiritual nature, but, but really doesn't understand what it means to be human. But, but this person that moved into our neighborhood was just like us. But was God with us? One of the things that they tell us about how to create a heresy is to try to make sense out of a mystery. We somehow want to, to fall into the temptation of the, the original sin. Be like God and know. We want to figure it out. And while that's noble and, and I think it's really faithful, there is a danger there and that we can fall into the trap of thinking if we can't understand it, it must not be true. I want to suggest to you that maybe we never really understand what this Emmanuel, God with us, really means from a theological and a, 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 a cognitive sense. But I want you to know that I think everybody in this room and everybody within the sound of my voice understands it. Let me give you an example. In Kentucky, in Arkansas, in Tennessee, in Illinois, in Missouri, when you see all of the scenes, the pictures, the film about the devastation, when you see that, that view from Google Earth, or the drone or the aircraft flying over a candle factory. When you see the pictures of what it looked like before and what it looked like after, it is still God with us. Before and after. And one day, there may be a shot of the rebuilt factory. We will still say it is God with us. Now let's bring it closer to home. Whenever you are in the waiting room and you are wondering what the diagnosis will be and what the treatment plan might be, it is God with us. We are not alone. This God with us is a mystery. But, but it is a, an historical fact that, that we hold on to tenaciously because, because, because it was true then. We know it is true now. Because it is true now, we know it will be true then. Emmanuel, God with us, wherever you find yourself, you will find God. Not some hologram. Not some figment of your imagination, but the same Jesus that walked in Nazareth walks in Whittier. The same Jesus that walked with Mary Magdalene and with all the other disciples walked. sounds too good to be true. And because it doesn't make sense, it's a mystery, 
maybe we dismiss it or we try to explain it away. But I will tell you, I believe it is true and I have literally bet my life upon it. And I believe you have too. That he was with us, he is with us, and he will be with us. We often say, again, Christ has died. It happened in the past. Christ is risen. It is happening right now. And Christ will come again. Uh, we're going we're gonna to close our service a little differently than, than we often do. I'm going to ask you if you would please to turn in your hymnal to 204. Um, I'm going to sing the first stanza alone, uh, and then um, I'm going to ask if you will, will join me, uh, and we'll sing it three times through. I'll sing it one time by myself, we'll sing it three times through, and then I'll sing it one time again by myself. And what I want to ask you to do is, is not sing it like a praise hymn. Don't sing it like angels we have heard on high. Sing it as if it were a prayer. You can sing it almost under your breath if you wish. But be reminded as we sing it that what it means is God with us. Would you join me in a time of, of ending our service today being reminded that God is with us. Thank you.
hope to see you this evening at 6, where we will continue being reminded of God's presence with us. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his very countenance to you and give you peace. Not as the world gives, sisters and brothers. For that is a here today and gone tomorrow kind of peace. But as Christ alone can give now and then the time to come. Whatever happens today, remember, Emmanuel, God with us.